Jogging is fast becoming one of the most popular sports in America, as attested by the large numbers that ran in the recent Boston and New York marathons. And while the big races in the North have ended, the racing season is just getting underway in the South. And indeed, for many, jogging is a year-round activity. Running, jogging, whatever you call it, it's in. Dave Winters of WDBJ-TV, Roanoke, Virginia, has more on the subject in the first of his three-part series on jogging. They are called joggers, and they come in all sizes, shapes, and ages, but they are all running for their lives. I uh, came up with a health problem a couple years ago, and I just wanted to uh, take care of that. And uh, my health problem was uh, a high blood pressure, and I was told that if I got myself in shape that I could uh, eliminate the, the, or st take care of the high blood pressure. And so uh, I started getting in shape, started running a little bit, and sure enough, it did help. Besides physical health, some people feel jogging is also good for mental health. I run to unwind from the pressures of the daily job that I have. When it's been a bad day, I can go out and it's a great way to relax. No need for medication or whatever. However, jogging is more than just putting on a pair of shoes and running. Doctors admit that it's a very strenuous form of exercise, and for the beginner, numerous injuries can be expected. These injuries result from either the type of shoes being worn or the surface on which you are running. If you're hurting yourself, you need to change for a while until the problem is, has been taken care of. Um, for example, um, if someone has a, a patellar or a kneecap uh, problem, it may mean that the um, shoe should be tilted to the inside or outside. There may be an in, inappropriate uh, fitting of the shoe. If there's an Achilles tendonitis, the shoe might be too tight or the heel might be too tight, for example. Um, perhaps another common problem would be that of simply muscular strain or soreness. This probably arises from people trying to do too much or too long distances or too much speed work too soon when they're starting to become a jogger. Dr. Dickerson adds that before a person begins jogging, a medical examination would be advisable, especially if the person is older or overweight. This is Dave Winters for CBS News. As in almost every sport, the more popular it becomes, the fancier the equipment it takes to play it. Jogging is no exception. There's plenty of jogging equipment and clothing these days, but it wasn't always that way. Dave Winters of WDBJ-TV, Roanoke, Virginia, reports on these changes in the second of his three-part series on jogging. The changes began in 1972 with the Munich Olympics. It was there that American businessmen discovered specialty sporting goods stores, pioneered by the Europeans. These specialty stores are aimed at the individual athlete, especially the jogger. Shoes are the most important item a jogger will purchase, since shoes are responsible for a great many of the injuries joggers suffer. People are looking for the best shoe they can get at the lowest price, obviously, because of economic reasons. But people who really know shoes and are buying shoes and are into running and doing a lot of running, they not only want the best shoe at the best price, but they want the best shoe for their foot. And sometimes the $20 shoe will suffice for running a few miles a day, but when they move up their mileage or they start running more days, then they find that these shoes don't have quite the support or quite what they need in the area to protect their foot. After the shoes have been selected, the would-be jogger then has to choose running clothes. These range from the cotton variety for only a few dollars up to the more stylish nylon types, about $10. For the person running only a few miles or in cool weather, the cheaper cotton clothing is satisfactory. But chafing becomes a problem in warm weather, especially for the long distance runner. Nylon clothing is both lightweight and dries quickly, thus reducing the possibility of chafing. This is Dave Winters for CBS News. Jogging is such a fun sport, many runners say that it's after they've overcome the aches and pains, and then many begin to think about entering races. That's the final hurdle of WDBJ-TV's Dave Winters reports in the last of his three-part series on jogging.
People are competitive by nature. Our society looks favorably upon those who score high on tests, who can hit the ball the farthest, and who can run the fastest. Jogging is an individualistic activity, with satisfaction being gained through a sense of accomplishment, either by running a planned distance or doing it at a certain speed. This sense of accomplishment can be heightened by entering races. It's the competition, plus I've set a goal for myself. Hopefully I'll run one marathon in every state of the 50 states in our country before I quit this uh, silly thing called marathon running. So currently I have 18 down and uh, hope to see the country this way. Also, it's great competition because you find out just how good you are against everybody else. But for some, the sense of accomplishment comes just from being in the race with others. Just enjoy getting out with the, uh, with the folks. The, um, uh, I don't come in first like Marshall does, and uh, I, just, I just have a good time out there running. Whether they enter races to prove something to themselves or to others, they all come away with the secondary benefit, and probably the most important thing, better health. This is Dave Winters for CBS News.